knees. Though the diamonds may be on the way to Hindam, God will surely give us victory, victory. Only move on to the righteous side. Move on to the righteous side. Move on to the righteous side of God. Move on to the righteous side. Move on to the righteous side. Move on to the righteous side of God. We are ready to overtake the countries. To possess the land from Jordan to the sea. Though the giants may be on the way to Hinda, God will surely give us victory. Victory. Only move on to the righteous side. Move on to the righteous side. Move on to the righteous side of God. Move on to the righteous side. Move on to the righteous side. Move on to the righteous side of God. Father, we thank you for this opportunity. We magnify you for who you are. We magnify you for the depth of love you have for us. Thank you for the grace that ushered us to become your children. Thank you for making us heirs of the kingdom and joint heirs with Jesus. We glorify your name. Thank you for the Holy Spirit that is a seal upon our lives. That declares us that we are your prized possessions. Glory and honor be to you. As we're here, we ask that you speak to us. That you charge us. And you take us to that realm that you have ordained for our lives. Thank you, Father, for doing this. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, by the grace of God, we'll be talking on strategies for church planting. And I think I want to start from the book of Genesis chapter number one. I want to start from Genesis chapter one. And I want to take my reading from verse uh, 26 to 28. Genesis chapter number one, verses 26 to 28. I take the reading. And God said, let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over all creeping things that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created him, Male and female created he them, and God blessed them. And God said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over everything that moved upon the earth. Hallelujah. God made man with the intention of man taking charge of every other thing he has made. And when we talk about church planting, we are fulfilling the, 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 the counsel of God in the book of uh, Romans chapter 8. Can we go there so that I'll be able to marry it together? Verse 29. Romans chapter number 8, verse number 29. For whom he did for know, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Now, let me bring it this way. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, God designed that would be made in his image. I heard when daddy was giving the introduction the other time, he told us what is happening in the world. That is 
a clear indication that man is not conformed to what God has designed. And the heart cry of God, the reason why God made us, is that we will be in his image after his very likeness. So, I want us to think of, of this before we begin to talk about even church planting. You see a lot of things when it comes to church planting. We want all I see most of the time is for us to increase the number of uh, churches in our, in our denomination. We also want to go from one city to another. But we, when we understand the counsel of Christ, we will plant church with the focus of God at heart and will be able to have the right results. The reason a lot of ministries plant churches is because the church is in Paracourt. We learn that there is money in Paracourt. Let's go to Paracourt. Oh, so church is in Lagos. Yay, we also need to go to Lagos. The intention of God is that he wants us to be like himself. He breathed himself into mankind. And after he breathed into mankind, the first thing he said to us is that we should do what? Be fruitful. What it means is that what I have brought into you, do what? Multiply this in others. Hello? Our being, our being servants of God, our being children of God, our going into church planting is to make the counsel of God to be established. And what is the counsel of God? He wants his image to be in all his creatures. That was why he said, have dominion. Take charge. Be in control. Subdue. And replenish the earth. Now, why I'm bringing this is that I know that the Lord will use us to do that which will glorify him and others will begin to see the counsel of God through us in the name of Jesus Christ. Because what I see most of the time, when you go to a lot of communities, you see the established churches, there are no pastors. You see the established churches, the people that were sent there are lamenting. There's a particular community I went to, uh, Otakbele. They sent a missionary there, planted a church, and uh, they abandoned him. And uh, that particular year when they were doing the Ilea festival, he went to where the Muslims were praying. Immediately they finished the prayer at the Eid ground. He went to join them to kill the, this thing, the, the rams, so that he would be part of at least they were given something to go about with. If those who planted the church had it in mind that what we want is the image of Christ to be replicated, I'm sure that they will not plant a church that they will not be ready to sustain. They wouldn't go to a place where they are not ready for. Hallelujah. 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 That's what is... Let me give you some personal experiences. I was in a mole. Imola is in the Pokia local government, and uh, that was uh, two years ago. I'm not talking of any other church. From the Baptists alone, 45 branches of their churches in those areas no longer have pastors. Structures that have been built, completed, no longer have pastors. I remember the particular Sunday I had to go with one of the deacons to worship in one of the communities. We got to the community, I had to start the, the church leader, the person who was supposed to be the representative of the church, and wake him and remind him, don't you know that today is Sunday? So when we will go about to plant churches, we should go with the mind that it's a very serious business. The song we sang when we started, we said, we are ready. It's not that, okay, everybody is doing I am ready. What are we ready to do? To do what Christ has designed. And what, what is the design of Christ? That his image be in the creatures that he has made. What is happening in the world today shows that, yes, we have, a, we have to restructure a lot of things. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, let's go to uh, the book of John chapter 4. Book of John chapter 4 verse 35. 
the book of John chapter 4 verse number 35 say ye not there are four months and commit the harvest behold I say unto you lift up your eyes and look to the fields but for they are white already for harvest hallelujah the world is ready for the harvest let me bring some things here we're in a worry land sir generally we know the notion most of us have about their worries is that they grab land a worry can sell a parcel of land to 20 people I ask people if we know that these people are this bad what are we doing as a church to go to them with the gospel of Jesus that will transform their lives hallelujah because we need to know why we want to establish churches why we want to plant churches we need to know why God wants us to advance we know their worries that okay this is what their worries do they can sell a parcel of land to as many people as will be gullible as many people will, as we fall into their traps but what intentional step is the church taking all we do is about is complain i was sharing with a group of people recently about what is currently happening in nigeria about uh, the herdsmen killing everywhere. I told them, I said, I went to a particular community in Oyo State. That was about six years ago. We went with medical missions. Some Fulani people came to us there. When they saw we were giving out drugs for free, they came to us and said, Ewa, Ewa, I want to need a church. I don't speak Fulani. I don't speak, Ful I don't speak full Fulani. And I know that uh, that language they spoke, they did not really understand it to the depth. They just understand it peripherally. So I just, I had to, I made contact with so many agencies. Can we get audio Bibles in full food the language? Up till now, I've not gotten one. I made frantic efforts. Now, even if we do not have someone who speaks full and near at that time, if we can get devices that can play the Bible in their native tongue, from there we'll begin. Up till now, we've not gotten one. I've made frantic efforts. So where I'm going is this. God designs that he wants people in his image. And he said we shouldn't look that, okay, it's until four months before the harvest. The harvest is now. We were somewhere after Federal University of Agric in um, Abel Kuta. They called the community Okiji Ologburuburu. That's the name of the community. We were there in 2007. Some Fulami people met us there. After we gave them medical missions, we spoke to them about Jesus. And we told them we'll be praying that evening. We, we told them it will, it will be a vigil. Because we know we'll have been tired after all the day's work, so that in the evening we'll be able to pray. Sir, they were there before 7 p.m. We told them vigil. They were there before 7 p.m. We were compelled to commence the vigil before 8 p.m. Now, the question I'm asking is this What is the church doing? to harvest these ones. They were ready. So now that they are taking arms against the church and against the nation, it's because we were not bothered about their eternal destinies. So if we plant church, we should plant church with the passion of Christ behind our hearts. Christ wants these people to be like himself. And the harvest is now. What I see around is that people say so many things uh, we don't understand. In Nigeria, uh, full and helps me. Look, let's look. We are, as Christians and leaders, 
as people who has the grace of God upon our lives, we should begin to see the way God sees. The Almagiris will never have been a problem to us in Nigeria if the church took advantage of their state. They never bothered. The church was not bothered. So why I'm bringing this is that before we begin to plant churches strategically, let's have the right mindsets. Hallelujah. When we have the right mindset, it will be easy for us to do what Christ will be willing to bless. What Christ will be willing to provide for. What Christ will be willing to increase. So many, commi- like we, we started a school for them in Madoga. That was three years ago. The, the place, the temporary site we are using used to be an Anglican church. Gone. No more church in the whole area. So where I'm going is this. He said, we shouldn't say that until four months before the harvest. The harvest is what? The harvest is now. It will shock you that there are communities in Oyo. Let me give you a particular instance in in Opo. That is Itesiwaju local government in Oyo state. We saw that there was a need there was a need for serious intervention. If it was going to rain, the only school that was serving about five communities were a block of three classes. Once the weather shows that it will rain, the next thing will be that the head of the school will send the children home. Why? Because he was not sure that the building will not collapse on them. So we have to look, what do we do? We made some moves and the Lord helped us to put a structure for them. As I'm talking to you, churches are thriving in that community, in those areas now. Because we saw that, look, if the government is not interested, let me, let me tell you this. Government is not the light. We are the light. It is after we have gotten there to do what Christ de- desires and establish the reign of Christ. That's when government will come there to come to do whatever they need to do. So we should not also wait for the government. We should do what? We should stand as the representatives of Christ to illuminate the dark places. We are the light. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Matthew chapter 4 verse 23. Matthew chapter number 4. Verse number 23. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all, and, uh, and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. This is our master, sir. We want to plant churches. We should look at our master. How did he start? Let me pause at this point. Let me say this. When God started blessing us in Genesis chapter 1 verse 28, the first thing he said to us, be fruitful. Sir, you can't speak to a five-year-old girl and say, go and give birth. Is it possible, sir? You can't speak to a seven-year-old girl, go and give birth. It's not possible. When God is speaking to us, be fruitful. The first thing God is demanding from us is that we should do what? We should mature. We should grow up. Hello? Let me say this to us. We have so many, we have coloration of uh, denominations. And if we do not grow to the fullness of Christ, we may not really be able to achieve what Jesus desired for us. If we do not grow, you can't speak to so, a, a small girl that you should be fruitful. You speak to someone who has grown, somebody who has attained to, pub, uh, to puberty. So, okay, now you can give birth. Now you should go and procreate. Spiritually, we should do what? We should grow. When we look at the examples of Jesus, Luke chapter 2, verse 52, it says, He grew 
in wisdom. That was when he now he grew in favor with God and with men. We need to grow intentionally. Let's grow out of uh, this is what my denomination is saying. What is the Bible saying? Ephesians chapter 4, verse 13 says, He wants us all to come to what? The fullness of the measure of the stature that is in Christ. Let me say this. If we must grow, we must see ourselves the way God is seeing us. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17 says that we should have a revelation of the knowledge of Christ. Let me give you this. I was in a particular community. I approached an abalist. I preached the gospel of Jesus to him, and he told me clearly, Why did you tell me about Jesus? I didn't argue with him, I didn't fight with him. I was still in that community, uh, I think about two weeks or so after. There was a fight between that particular herbalist and someone else. He brought out his charms. He was shouting, Mapai! People in the area were afraid. They wanted to separate the fight. They were afraid. So someone called on me. Say, man of God, there's a problem in so-so place. So immediately I heard, I rushed there. The abalis was with two charms. Mapai just As I just got there, I went straight to him to collect the two charms. Immediately he saw that I wanted to collect the two charms. He said, Joe, Joe, Joe. The demon just left him. To the glory of God, less than one week after I came back to me, I need that Jesus. Now, you see, if we do not grow, if all we see is that uh, there's a witch there, there's a wizard there, we are not, who are we? A light does not run away from darkness. Light subdues darkness. If we do not grow to the level that we know that, yes, what God says about our lives is true. If we need to see ourselves in the revelation that God is seeing us, that's where we can really do the work. I've seen so many pastors who ran away from villages where God sent them to because there were idols there. Because there were so many habalis there. Because they kept seeing sacrifices at junctions. God wants us to do what? Before we can be fruitful, we need to do what? We need to grow up. Hello? Before we can be fruitful, we need to do what? We need to grow up. Please, let's increase. Let's not just read the Bible for the sake of... Let me say this. He who wants to save his life, what did the Bible say he will do? He will lose it. So, to remove the fear... God has not given you the spirit of fear. He has given you the spirit of adoption. There is, the Holy Spirit is a seal upon your lives that declares to demons and forces of darkness that you are God's prized possession. Please, let's grow to that level. When you grow to that level, it will be easy for you to preach the gospel, to establish a church that will thrive. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Now, Jesus went about what was he doing? He was healing the sick. He was delivering those who are oppressed. The gospel message that is devoid of the power of the gospel is not the gospel message. Hello? 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 20. It says the kingdom of God does not come in words. It comes in what? It comes in power. So let's not be theoretical Christians. Let's be pragmatic Christians. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Mark chapter 16. Mark chapter 16. I'll take it from verse 15. Mark chapter 16. I'll take it from verse 15. And he said to them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. 
and these signs shall follow them that believe in my name they shall cast out devils they shall speak with new thongs they shall take up serpents and if they drink any deadly thing it shall not hurt them they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover so then after so then after the lord has spoken to them he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of god and they went forth and preached everywhere the lord walking with them confirming the word with signs following the lord knew, knew what walking with them these are not new scriptures to us but we should just like the song we sang i am ready to go up and take the countries we should be ready to implement what you see uh, one thing i see in the body of christ is that we, we we learn so many things but we put very few to practice hello we learn so many things but we put very few to practice these are not new scriptures to us i need the presence of god to do whatever i want to do if i'm sure of the presence of god sir i will not hesitate to do what he desires for me i will not hesitate to go to territories that people need where people need the gospel to preach to them i will not hesitate to to teach them what the lord wants them to know let me give you something the lord made me understand a few months back i i went to most of the southern uh, southwest i mean the western region in nigeria most of them are not learned i discovered that one of the things that affected discipleship and church growth in those areas was illiteracy people couldn't read so all they know is what you tell them. Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 says this. That's the limit to what they know. After that, they don't know any other thing. So once whoever is teaching them is not there, it goes away from them. And I began to ask the Lord, what do we do? Something came to my mind. Audio Yoruba Bible. Make this thing available to them. Start it in a small way. You can put it in a memory card and put it on your phone. Have a time. Let's meet on Monday. Whatever day you know they are free. Meet even you can meet prayers of four times a week. You can meet every day. On, okay, let me bring this before I even say that. When we talk about church planting, I think I see mostly what we see is the brand. This one is CAC. This one is RCCG. Look, let Christ be the first thing on your mind. Hello? Fulfilling the mandate of Christ should be the first thing, not the brand. Now, I discovered that the village where we test run this model just call them together Bale, we are coming for prayer at the front of your palace let your people join us just play maybe maybe john chapter one just play john chapter one pause it for a while ask the people what did they hear why are you asking them what they hear so that you'll be sure they are following you let it be so interactive then pray give them another date we'll continue tomorrow systematically you will cover the bible in that way and people will be able to interact with the scriptures with you before you know what is happening they understand what the bible is saying it's not that today i came okay now we are preaching this tomorrow again we are no they are they, they are the major participants all you do is that you are a coach sir if you do that in the next six months have you not planted a church sir 
He has planted a church because already people are, they, know, they, know, they already know that by social time we'll be meeting at XYZ place to, 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 to share the scriptures and to pray. And by the time they keep having testimonies, you wouldn't force them to bring other people. For the image of Christ to be made manifest in them will be easier because they have interacted with the scriptures. This is what the Bible says. This is what, is, this is what it implies in my life. Please, am I talking to us? Please, am I talking to us? So when we are talking about church planting, let's go outside the denomination. Let's look at what does Christ really want. The model in the, in the, in the New Testament church was not their brand. They were going about, what were they doing? Sharing the word of God, breaking bread together. And what did the Bible say? They were doing what? They were increasing. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Let me bring one more scripture then begin to talk about methods and uh, Acts of the Apostles chapter 1 verse 8. Acts of the Apostles chapter 1 verse number 8 Acts chapter 1 verse 8 the Bible says ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come on you and you shall be witnesses unto me from where Jerusalem to Judea um, to Samaria to Judea and to the utmost part of the earth let me ask this question is Jerusalem the name of a church? No. It's a city. You see, when God sent you to a wherever you are now, God sent you as his ambassador, not to that, just one local corner. He sent you to the whole city. Wherever you have, got, you have covered now, you have not covered the whole city. And your assignment in that city is not just to 10 people or 20 people or 100 people in that city, your assignment is to the whole of that city. So what does that tell you? You have a lot of work to do, to do what? To reach out to the city. The essence of the Holy Spirit being in us, the essence of us receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit is that wherever we are located, we are the ambassadors of Christ in such places to do what? To establish his kingdom there. Not that, look, I, this is the name of my church. This is all, this is all we have here. This is all, no, 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 no. So if, I, I know a brother, he worked, a, 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 the bank has married with a, a, a particular bank now. Any city is it was being sent to then transferred to that city will receive a branch of the church. It will start the branch of the church from the bank. You know how busy the bank bankers are. It will start the branch. Of the church. Let's have tea together. Can we pray together? Before you know what happens, a church is standing. He did that in several cities before he went into full-time ministry. Where I'm going to is that the Holy Spirit came upon us so that we we'll become his ambassadors, not to a local church, but to the whole city. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Can we look at Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, verses 42 to 47? Maybe I'll read this. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2. 42 to 47 Acts of the Apostles and they continued steadfastly in the Apostles doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers and fear came upon every soul and many wonders and signs were done by the Apostles and all that believed were together and all and had all things in common and sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men as every man had need and they continued daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart praising God and having fellowship with one, with all the people and the Lord added 
to the church daily such as should be saved when we do what is needful whatever church is planted we grow naturally hallelujah last year there was a lockdown I asked some pastors what were the practical things you did because when the government locked down the church I mean locked down the whole nation it doesn't mean that activities of evangelism and Bible study should stop now hello government did not say we shouldn't meet at all even if it will be two people if it will be five people the lockdown afforded us a lot of opportunities to do so many things people who will naturally not be available were available because of the lockdown so it gave us an opportunity ample opportunity to reach out so let, what I'm saying is this I pray that the Lord will help us we will see what Christ wants us to from here we'll begin to plant churches as a lifestyle you see when we talk about church planting the first thing we see is hey how much how, how will we get money to buy land hey how will we rent how will we get money for rent that shouldn't be the first thing how will I win souls when you reach out to souls some of them will even give you their facility let's start here I love what God is doing in you and through you let's do what let's start here and with time God will begin to grow his church and as God grows his church once you are faithful to the assignment God has committed to you and you, do, you keep your focus on Christ there is no limit to that growth the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, strategies. Let me. A strategy I learned about three, four years ago. Planting a church around projects. Planting a church around projects. We went to some communities. We discovered that. The children will trek 14 kilometers to the only existing secondary school in the area. Some communities trek up to 20 kilometers to school. There was no means of, uh, I mean, there's no means of public transport in the area. The children had to trek. After school, they will have to trek that same length back home. So we felt this is a wonderful opportunity. I'm a missionary. I couldn't go there to say, look, let's go and buy land. You know what I did? I called the leaders of the community together. Please, I'm, I'm, I'm being practical. I don't, I don't, just, I don't just teach uh, Young Cho or teach Peter Wagner. I teach what I believe you can handle and practice. Hello, please. Am I talking to Ross? I, that's what I believe. I don't. I, be, I don't believe in teaching what is vague, what you can't handle. We went to the community. We saw that this was a strong need. I didn't have the money to go and buy land there. So what I did was gathered the leaders of the community together, shared some words with them about how to develop their communities, and asked them, what are your strongest needs? All of them agreed that they needed schools. What will the community do for us to have the school? It was at the meeting they gave an acre of land. Fine. Okay. We now sat down again. We have the land now. How will we build the school? Every family 
in the community agreed that they could donate a bag of cement. So they contributed a bag of cement. The people who knew about blood molding started work. As I'm talking to you now, the school is at the roofing stage. And fellowship is seriously ongoing in the community because of that activity. So when we talk about church planting, you know, now it costs me minimal. What it costs me is what it carries me to go to the community. And the, the, the preparations I make towards preaching. You can start a church. You know, most rural communities defecate openly. Hello? Most rural communities, they defecate openly. You can start a church on that. Go and Google how, what is the effect of this practice? Gather the community together. Give it in series. When you go there, tell them I'm a Christian. Let them know where you are starting from. I'm a Christian, then you teach them. After you teach them, you begin to colorize it with what the Bible is saying. Together with you, you will start probably maybe one toilet. After the toilet, you pray for them. Tomorrow you come back. You fix a particular time. Before you know what is happening, you are starting. A, they, will, they will willingly give you a land to start the church with. Please, am I talking to you? Yes, yes, yes. Because these are their needs. Oh, they don't anywhere they go. So as you begin to educate them, some of them can do it in their houses. That's where you are going. But you are using their needs to do what? As an inroad into their community. Before you know what is happening, you have, you have started a church. The church will be highly participatory because you have solved their problems. And it will not cost you so much. Because when we talk about church planting, the first thing in the mind of an average pastor is that, ah, where will we get the money? Where will we get the resources? All you need is, am I, am I, that's why I said we need to grow up. We need to get matured. Don't just read the Bible. Let the Bible be in you. See whatever you see, see from the eye of the Bible. Once you begin to see from the eye of the Bible, you get to a community, you be a solution, and before you know what is happening, you have planted a church, and the church will thrive. I went to a particular community. I, I formed a, com a committee. I made an allergy, the head of the committee, and I told him any time I'm around, you will give me a report. So whenever I get to the community, I say, okay, can we pray? He said, Pastor Yegbadura. So when I would talk, I would tell them what the Bible is saying. What am I doing? The analogy is there. The idol worshippers, I purposely made them the leaders. The people who were church leaders were only members of the, of the committee. To the glory of God, they came to me and said, look, we like what you are doing. We want you close. We want you to come closer to, to us. You know why I'm telling you all this? A Muslim will remain a Muslim if he doesn't see a need. He, do, he doesn't see anything different. All you are doing is, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. He doesn't see. You have not demonstrated the love of Jesus. Look at the example of what Jesus did in, in, in John chapter 4. He went to the well. He didn't tell that woman, you must be born again. What did he tell her? I want to drink water. He started simple, intelligent discussions with her. Um, before he concluded the discussion, she discovered that he was the Messiah. Do you understand? You, you, ah, this is a difficult terrain. Pray to the Holy Spirit to give you the insight. You will be there. You will have a church that will thrive. Because you will not start as, a, as an antagonist. Sit down. For instance, Omitemu is not neat. 
you teach them how to purify their water. You tell them the health benefits of purifying water, and you tell them the, the, the implication of drinking dirty water. You bring demonstration. Then you begin to, do you understand? Please, am I talking to Ross? Yes, These are simple ways to start churches that will not cost you so much. And you will have acceptance from a very large group of the, of the community. Because let me give you an instance. I was somewhere in uh, or your state, Ikonsi. We went for medical outreach. And um, the assistant chief imam came. We gave him free drugs and every other thing. Cancelled him and prayed for him. And uh, he didn't come for the outreach in the evening. The following day, the chief imam in the mosque started condemning those people who came for the medical outreach. There and then in the mosque, the assistant chief imam challenged the imam. Excuse me, sir. Since you have been the imam, what have you benefited? These people came. This is what they gave to us. They didn't demand for anything. Please, am I talking to you? Yes, sir. So, and this was a predominantly Muslim community. So all we need to plant church is to be open to the Holy Spirit. When we are open to the Holy Spirit, there is no limit to what God can do. In Europe, for instance, we went for evangelism and I discovered that the guy who was bringing water for me to bait would take long. So I decided to follow him to know where he was getting the water from. When I saw the only well in the community, when I, I tried to peep through, I didn't say, all I saw was darkness. I said, wow. I said, please. Kidney, what's your problem in this area? So when they enumerated it, okay, Lord, you will help us. When God helped us to sink a borehole in the community, the Habalists who were standing against the church were the first that released their children to start going to church. So Alema Romi Moni Louis conveniently. Go, 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 go. When we went to the Abali, the Abali said, you see, people have known me, and this is the only source of livelihood I have. But I've released my wife and children. Let them go to church. We are still working on the Abalist. But at least he has released his family to the Lord. Please, am I talking to us? Please, the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. When we are strategic in, in, in this way, just be sensitive to whatever is their need. Like the school project did not cost us so much. What we did was like we were like coaches. They have all the resources. We'll go, okay, I will also give you two bags of cement. Oh yeah, let's put it together. If I get to the school, if I get to the community today, you know what they say? They say this man started a school for us. But is it true? I didn't start the school for them. Uh, it had been a desire on their hearts. They had desired to have a school. They didn't know how. And God used me to gather them together and all their resources together. And today, they are giving me the credit for founding the school. But I'm not the founder. They did. Please, am I talking to us? So all we need to plant church, churches that will thrive, churches that will be self-sustaining, you know, I, I want you to note what I said. Churches that will thrive and churches that will be self-sustaining is that be, be open to the Holy Spirit. When you're open to the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit gives you ideas. And before you know what is happening, the people will love to work with you. They can't trust their people, but they can trust you. And before you know what is happening, you'll be able to gather them together, gather their resources together, and before long, they see you as a hero in their midst. And they will naturally follow your God. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. 
Now, there are traditional methods of church planting. The normal method is you go to a community, you do evangelism. And let me tell you this. That method works till tomorrow. Did you hear what I said? That method works till tomorrow. When you go to a community, the challenge I have with the church is that the church brings member from this church, member from that church to start another church. I don't believe that is church planting. Just transferring members. If you will really start a church that you will not have problems with. If you bring the Redeemer and CAC and winners to your church, there's nothing you do. They will see from the eye of where they are coming from. If you bring a Muslim, an Abalist, they will follow you hook, line, and sinker. Please, am I talking to you? If you bring, you come here, no, church, our pastor is anointed, he can see. If that is what brings that person to church, he cannot follow you wholeheartedly. He already has opinion. He can pick from so-so pastor or so-so pastor. But go to someone who has not known Jesus. Preach the gospel to him. It may be slow. But that is always a winning formula. Hello? It may be, it may be slow. But that is what? Always a winning formula. And let me say this. Matthew chapter 28. Matthew chapter number 28, 18 to 20. <clears throat> Matthew 28, 18 to 20. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost teaching them to observe the things whatsoever I have commanded you and lo I am with you always even to the end of the earth one thing that is affecting the vibrancy of the church and that is affected. We teach cheers in the church. Discipleship have been neglected. Let me start from this. I went somewhere to teach and um, a pastor asked a question. The question was that why were the youths rebellious? And I told him, I said, you never taught them. He said, what do I mean? I said, you have a children's department in the church that caters for age 1 to 10. All of them crammed into the same place. I said, you are not talking. I, I, said, I told him, I said, well, you are not talking to all of them. He said, you are talking to the one-year-old or you are talking to the 10-year-old. He said, so there's a generation that grew up that either the message was always above them or beneath them. So you instructed them. You are only assuming that they are rebellious. They never understood you all along. He said, what do I mean? I said, exactly. He said, what should we do? When you are planting a church, intentionally carry all these age groups along as you plant. Hello? Please, am I talking to you? Intentionally carry all these age groups along. It's not compulsory, you do it all together. Somebody who is not a child of God cannot be a disciple. Oh. You can't start a discipleship program for someone who is not born again. And somebody who doesn't know what you are preaching will not make a decision to be born again. Is am I talking to us? And please, our messages should be so simple. Don't learn grammar that is so big that people will look at dictionary before they will. Even when you are speaking Yoruba, speak simple one that can relate and put to practice. In that way, whatever you are saying will make meaning. 
Sir, so when we went to Ekwene, there was it two or three, or two or three years ago. We were to preach. I was to preach before the medical outreach. So many Muslims, so many chiefs. I just got there. I said, "Okay, well, Holy Spirit, what do I do?" And I said, "Okay, let me tell you a story." I told the story of. They were hey. I was with the story I was bringing out God's plan of salvation. All of hey, and after this thing, they said, What should I do? It was they who knew what should be done. Please understand. So you don't need to quote, yes, generation revelation chapter 15. Preach in such a way that people will understand what you are saying. God has done that because to be preaching since uh, 2002, they understand what you are saying. Preach in a way. I do, I ask questions a lot when I teach. I came to Ipaja in 1999 to teach in the ministry. I was already there for over 30 minutes, and the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, They do not understand you. I said, The ministers. Ah. So I had to come back. It was like, doing Mount Zion film. That was the way I, I, I taught that day. Since that year, I don't teach without asking questions. Because that will tell me, am I running alone? Or am I going with people? Please do you understand. As servants of God, don't just preach. If I preach, at times I, I pause in the midst of preaching and ask questions. You know. In fact, if you have questions, I will answer your question. Because what's the essence of me preaching one hour, one and a half hour's message and nobody understands me? At the end of it, all we pray and I'm alone. I've only spoken to myself. I all, I've only felt good. All of them were lost. What's the meaning? So if I'm preaching and I discover that, hey, I'll pause. What's the question? Preaching can become teaching for as long as this ministers to the people. Now they can see God and make a decision for them. Now, Jesus said, teach them those things you have learned from me. We print posters and build, do program, do all jingle, do all these things. When people come to the church, what do we teach them? Abby, what do we teach them? We are not, they didn't come for us so that we teach them. Uh, there was a denomination. So my wife and children went. In fact, when my wife came, she was so disappointed. What they were doing in the Bible studies, how you can be a good member of this church. So, wow. So that's a special Bible study. So teach them what they can grow with. And what is that telling you? You need to labor more on the word and see the class of people God has brought you to. If I were to be teaching outside this place, I wouldn't speak too much Torontio. If I speak two grammar, I will speak one Yoruba. You know why? I don't the end of the old that I've wasted your time and wasted my, mm -mm, I don't do it. So I would rather teach 10 minutes from the Bible and try to interpret to all the languages so that at least the 10 minutes will be meaningful than for us to just sit down, I'm the only one that felt good, man, a lot of sorrow through me. What did, did the people hear that voice, the voice of God? The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Please, am I talking to you? Teach them. What, is, what are they to teach them? To observe those things that I have spoken to you. Very, very important. We labor to do all those things. Let as the people come, the one is to know Jesus and to know his counsel. And the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. I said the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Going back to... Okay. I want to say a thing here, sir. Going back to that uh, Matthew chapter 28. 
I want to draw some things to, to explain a particular thing. Maybe that's where I will pause. I believe that the, fo the first church did that. That's why the church is still existing till today. Can I have a board, please? And a marker. Now, there are four steps that once we take, I believe uh, we'll be able to have a wonderful church that will thrive. A wonderful church that will thrive. Thank you so much, sir. The first step is go. You've gotten to the place of your assignment. You are doing what God wants you to do. Or do you disciple? Now, as you go and you disciple, teach them what Christ wants them to know. Then you, with them, will go. You are establishing them. Maybe they, gave, they came to Christ yesterday. They are happy. So can you share? If I go, if I have a new convert today, tomorrow morning if I'm going out for evangelism and he's around, I'll pick him along. I'll preach to someone in his presence. The next person I will preach to, I will tell him, you'll be the one to tell that person, ah, talk to him. You know, that one is more practical than for me to start saying, evangelism is the act of. Am I talking to you? That one is very practical. He knows that he's not just teaching evangelism is the act of. So once you teach him, you go, you have gone to him, you have taught him, you and whoever you are discipling, you have come together, you begin to do what? Multiply. Because you gave back to one yesterday, you and that disciple went out today, maybe he is able to win two people. You won one. It becomes a teacher of those people he went to. Please, am I talking to you? Yes, yes. Those things you have taught him. You are not teaching him to, for him to write in, in his uh, sermon notes. You are teaching him so that the, the, that person he preached to yesterday, he should also develop the time to go and begin to reach out to him, to begin to teach that person what he was taught. Mm. And that was what the first church did. That's why we still have the church today. So that church, as you, as, you, as you go to him, he teaches that person and he's also encouraging that person in his next outreach to also go along with him. He's going from that realm, he's going to another realm, and in that way you'll be able to discover the grace of God upon his life and you'll prepare him so that he will also be... Do, do you understand? The process revolves round and round. I reached out to this one today. Together, I already have a partner. Tomorrow, what time will you be free? I'll be free by uh, so so time. Let's go together. You go together. Yeah, this is my friend. He just gave his life to Jesus. He wants to tell you about his story. Whatever he says, you are there as a coach. You will fine tune whatever he says. You are building confidence in him. It's more effective than you organizing a special seminar. We went to Agboju close to Festac. We had a three-day teaching. We had more than 100 people in participation. The third day, we said, okay, we will go out to practicalize what we have learned. Just about six people came. Why? They were afraid. Do you understand? Most of them have been in the church. They were afraid. Huh? Eh? Evangelism. Okay. Okay, sir. All of them sought for excuse. Just about six of them came. 
for practical I've done it in different places. So for you not to stress yourself, you know the best thing? Just as you are giving your life to Jesus, I will teach you what Jesus wants you to know. See, okay, say bye. This is what the Bible says. Whatever you teach him from repentance, as he's, you are teaching him, bring him out. Let him talk about his salvation experience. What you taught him yesterday, he already has a topic to teach somebody else. The Abba, thank God, Pastor saw the Abalis that gave his life to Christ. We went to. If you sleep together in the same house, five thirty-five a.m., you will see him carry megaphone. Even before I will wake up, before I'll be through with my devotion, seeing him outside. What is he doing? Because that's the way he was brought up. So he cannot. Sit down and sleep as if nothing is uh, where is he, he practiced his abal work, where he had the most clients. He went to Adato, went to the market in Adato, brought out his megaphone, started shouting, eh? uh, Do you understand? So you are evangelizing, teaching him evangelism, even when he now attends a seminar, a training, a conference, or whatever. Is just to establish what he has known. In that way, if you bring up a believer like that, he will be a very fruitful believer. Why? Because from day one, he's been taught to reach out to other people. If he grows up two, three years like that, let me tell you, he will, he, it will be his lifestyle to preach the gospel, to also establish people. Then discipleship will not be a big deal to him. Ah, we want to support this up. It will be easy for him because it is a lifestyle he had been brought into right from the day he, he met with Christ. Let me pause at this point, sir. I don't know what you want to say, sir. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Lord. Father, we thank you for the grace you've given to us. Honor and praise be ascribed to your great name in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. To continue on the strategies, Daddy says something about the CDA. The CDA is a very fertile ground. I met an abalist. When I got to my place, a very new, new site, and um, I moved the people together. Let's start something now. So when we came together, you pray now. He's a Muslim. But because of my evangelistic work in an area, when I say pray, he say no. Uh, you pray. The Muslim wants to pray, he's saying, Lord God Jesus. <laughs> That's what I experienced in my area. This is a very fertile ground. And there are so many things we can do in the CDA. There is what I call health screening. This, is what, this one is not dispensing of drugs, just to screen. When a handful of landlords come, say, let's screen your health. Let's know your health status. The screening will lead to a lecture. It causes them to avoid whatever was an impending sickness. Before end of that, you will embellish it with the words of Jesus. That may now lead to, if it is serious medical concerns, it may lead to, if not, you will, you will maintain the talk. You give them a talk, just like I said concerning the rural area, when you eat so 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 thing, you sleep by so so time, you do people will ha have so many questions. This is what we did. we we went to a poker local government and uh, when we brought some ophthalmologists there. Well, that, was it Lua Lua they call it? There's an eye problem that was impending the opportunity. We didn't give drugs to anyone. We just came, let's screen your eyes. 
we did it and uh, a lot of people came so a lecture was developed the people went they began to clamor for how can we get intervention how can we so they were the ones who prompted the next phase Tomologists came back came with drugs came with tools and whatever now where i'm going is this cda is a very fertile ground look at most people don't exercise i can drive from here to ipaja bus stop when i'm trying to drive back i'm going to olude i still drive from here to olude i drive back i'm going to where again to abeso people don't trek they don't exercise their bodies that is a very good opportunity you can bring a physical uh, exercise person oh yeah landlord hey, oh, ah, hey. uh, the bible says bodily exercise profited before you know what is happening you are planting some seeds and before you know what is happening sincerely in the community some celestial people came to me and said that day do better church please come and start a church we want to attend your church do you understand what I'm, I'm from the cda there is no limit to what we cannot do there's no limit some people I call them accidental landlords. Since they became landlord, they stopped growing. It's an opportunity. Uh, at times, my wife will say, Why is it that anywhere you go, you always look for trouble? I said, Me, I've been trained to, anywhere I get to, I try to look for needs. What are the needs in this area? Because if I'm preaching, I mean, Akilode, why is your road as bad as this? You can get a tractor, I mean, a great, it will not, it will not be more than 40,000. Eh, with one, 1,000, you know, so, so, uh, when did you come to this area? And you have uh, started analyzing the problem and the solution. Because anywhere I get to, the first thing I look is, what can we do to advance the cause of Christ? So I look holistically. So the CDA is a very fertile ground. Uh, the ballet is also a very good ground, sir. Thank God for your profession. Ballet, we want to bow on the alpha with your medical, whatever. Let me analyze you. With that, you have entered into him, you have entered his chiefs. I'm a Christian. At least you have introduced yourself. I am a Christian. Another thing we can do in the CDA is huge spots. Once there is a vacant land, we can organize a tournament, sir. A tournament, uh, our so 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 on this street stroke versus uh, our so 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 on this street. Me, I'm not looking for how expert they are. I'm not looking for their expertise. What I'm looking for is an opportunity to gather them together. When you play, you can do this and you chip in the gospel. Half time. At least it's 15 minutes now. 15 minutes half time is good enough to preach the gospel. I can buy snacks. Buy your birthday. Me, I don't do birthday or shibon. If I will preach the gospel, I can use it. Somebody shared his experience with us. He said when he clocked 50, he looked, he said, the policemen in this area are so bad. So he said he went to the DPO. DPO, I'll be 50 tomorrow. And I want to mark my birthday with you. You policemen, you are great people. Ah, if not for you, we will not have security. You know, stuff like that. This is, he said the DPO was so elated. Yeah, you know, people don't recognize what we do, even though we know that they are not doing what they are supposed to be doing. He said, he's, oh, the police, the role of police in this area cannot be overemphasized. You know, stuff like that. The DPO agreed. Tomorrow, you can up to. He said, I want to pray with you tomorrow. 
as we eat together, then we pray together. The people say, he gave him a time. He gathered the pizza pizzas together in that station. They ate together and he shared the gospel with them. He said the following week he was he was going out as they were driving out. There was traffic build up. Immediately the policemen saw they cleared the road for him. He said, now I don't become VIO. I'm, I'm a VIP. Hallelujah. He has made an impact. Another set of people we are not looking at to these Okada people. Ever busy. Ever busy. But when you look at their time, anything from 10 a.m., especially weekdays, they are fresh. Because most of the people who are going out have gone. Most of the, uh, they are usually free. That's the best time to reach out to them. If you will reach out, you know, before you will catch a fish, you must put a small bait. I hope you understand it. Look at what they need. Something small. It may not cost you much. You will have a regular fellowship with them. If I climb Okada now and I'm going back home, you know I'm, I'm not fighting him. I'm only asking him, since why are you driving this way? Are you on debt? Ah. He will start explaining to me. And I'm not, it's not that I just want to listen to him. I will try to give him a solution. And I will also speak to him about Jesus. Please, am I talking to you? You know, these things, it's not as difficult. Hey, how do we preach? It's not as difficult. Okada people, wonderful set of people. Agberos. They look, but most of them are very simple. This strong voice is just uh, is just to camouflage. Hallelujah! I've seen most of them. And most of the time, if I will preach to, if I will reach out to these people, what I do is that I I, I go on jeans and t-shirts, so I wouldn't go on suit or whatever. So I look simple. I don't look like a holy... I hope you understand it. So I am approachable. Ah! Hey, Baoni! Ah. In my area, once I get to my bus stop, there are some area, but okay. Ah, pastor! Even when they are smoking him, they, at that moment I'm there, they will hide it. They wah, 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 wah. I'll begin to and be with that. So when I get to the bus stop, most of them, ah, pastor, so God will help us. You see, to reach out, all this, like I said earlier, all we need is to be sensitive. Don't be rigid. There was a time I was, I was reaching out to prostitutes. I went, I was walking towards my first book then. That was 1999. I got to a late in the evening. And I saw young girls, ah, eh? You know, it was a shock to me. Eh, Jesu. So it became a burden on my heart. I couldn't sleep again. It just came out. Began to preach. I was going for a, a vigil, an intercessory vigil at um, Sabo Yaba. So I had to alight at uh, Moshelashi in Mushin to trek across Empire to Yaba, if you know that axis. As I was, I was in a hurry. I saw some girls half naked. I thought, hey, I'm a child of God. One of them said, I'm also a child of God. Say, eh? You were a child of God doing this. Say, yes. Say, what's your name? She told me, say, where is your place? She pointed to the place. Don't worry, I want. I just went. The day I was free, I went to Empire. As I got there to look at to look for her, she saw me say, Look, I'm busy now. Okay. I want to buy 30 minutes of your time. How much is it worth? She told me. That this is your money. Sit down here. 
Yes, I'm going to go. See, you are not permitted to talk to anybody for that 30 minutes. So she kept quiet. You know, I brought her 30 minutes. I began to preach to her. To the glory of God, before I finished talking to her, she started crying. And I told her, all this you do to me is drama. If I will be sure that you are giving your life to Jesus, I am at a better so 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 place by so so time. When you come, then we start the process of rehabilitating you and discipling you. She came. I hope you heard what I said. She came. All we need, let's be sensitive. Don't be rigid. Don't be rigid. Be sensitive. When you are sensitive, you go to an area boy, about me, Bobo. Ah, you normally they will not greet you as a gentle person. They will greet you. Don't look at it. Be ah, why this guy handling my hand roughly? Bobo, ah, shaking him. Ah, I will be reward all my land on him. Ah, kilo share. So need the one. Who doesn't need the one? Everybody needs a owner. Oh, need a owner. You begin to talk. In the community, we can also do some things. This clean up. Drainage is full. We mobilize the people. The we can. Do. The drainage is bad. We can mobilize people. They can granite. It will be a full load. This port is very bad. Mobilize this thing. There's this uh, evangelism method we do. We you just write. You can write where we spend your eternity. Somebody will stay there. Hold it this way. Where will you spend your eternity? Another one will be close to him. Have you spoken to God today? You know stuff like just any caption. And some people are fixing the road. What do you think people who are driving by will be doing? Literally, because you are putting sand there. You are not walking fast. You are not there because of the time you want to finish the work. You want to pass a message across. If I, if I hold, if someone here holds that now, where will you spend eternity? I may just stay there and be watching. Once you show interest, I'll come to you. Hey, ring got to I'm already preaching to you. I'm already speaking to you about God. Okay, where will you spend eternity? Hey, hey. Eternity. You know, that person has read the... Pre- so I will help him to stamp that thing deep in his or her thought. Where will you spend eternity? The person begins to look. Ah, Otomani. Then begin to... Do you understand? So to, to reach out... Once you are sensitive in the spirit, it is very easy. Pastor was saying that they went for a widow's program. Excellent. Excellent. People who are not widows, once they know that some things will be distributed, will come. It's an opportunity to reach out. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. And uh, majorly, let me, I have a, a, a place of concern. The youths. There's this social media that is driving most of the youths away from the knowledge of Christ. My concern, especially to the youths that are here, can't we have contents on the social media that will attract the youth? People spend a lot of money on data. What are they using the data for? To watch those things that do not matter for their lives or their eternity. When I was looking for audio Bible in Yoruba, I stay... Cl- Close to Atom after winners. I came to Yanopaja. So, is there no audio Bible on on C, or, uh, before I got on CD? It was somebody who called me from Ibadan that said there was a bookshop. I said, Kilon Shele. 
I thought I would just get one. Play it, transfer it to memory card. Please, for you who are youth, the Lord will help us. The youth need good content, quality content on the social media. It doesn't have to be too long. I can give you, if you get to my house, once you are looking at my house from a distance, I have a very big banner. You know what is written on the banner? Are you born again? If not, then you are on the way to hell. Simple, and I put John 3 3, John 3 16 to 18. Some people say, ah, what has this man written? If I'm around, fine. If I'm not around, I know that whatever it is, the Holy Spirit will use someone to call several. Ah, I've seen imams, afars, say, ah. God gave me a vehicle. I did this banner, placed it on the bonnet. Jesus is the only way to heaven. You know why I'm saying all this? Everything about your life as a Christian is to tell the world about he who took your place on the cross. He who denied, who, he who tasted death so that you will not go to hell. He who gave you an inheritance among them that have been sanctified. What can you do that will be too much to proclaim him? Hello? I hope you heard what I'm saying. There's nothing that is too much for you to do to proclaim this Jesus. And I was telling someone, I said, look, if we are not proclaiming Jesus, what will we be doing again? Nothing is interesting any longer in the world, sir. Listen to the news. Uh, bomb blasts here. Gunmen there. Kidnapping there. Uh, attack a police station. Uh, so many things. There's nothing, nothing interesting. I told somebody, I said, when we were young, weekend like this, they will go to Babbage. Can you go from Nepal to Babbage? You can't go because the traffic is bad. Oh, okay, I think somebody said they have canceled Babbage. Can you go to Badagri now? You can't go to Badagri Beach. The traffic will, 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 will frustrate you. So what is interesting in the world again? Nothing. So what we can do that will make God happy is for us to do what? Device means. Hello? Device means to do what? Claim the gospel of Jesus anyhow. Hello? Proclaim the gospel of Jesus. Just like I said the other time. I can hear of daddy's birthday and say, Daddy, I have a birthday for you. Invite your friends. You know, uh, what are you saying? Well, I want you to invite your friends. I feel that I want to celebrate you. Who will not want to be celebrated? Abisa, everybody wants to be celebrated. Get cake, we are 3,000, 4,000. Get soft drinks. Pata pata 5,000. Let him bring his people. Oh, that is a wonderful man. A, and you begin to speak about Jesus after that. You have used his birthday as, as a means of reaching out to his friends. Even if he were not to be born again, it is possible he may decide for Christ. Even if he did not decide for Christ, he has the opportunity of making a decision. You have shown him love. Please, am I talking to you? No, no, no. We must mark your birthday. No, we must mark it. Invite your friends. When is your wedding anniversary? No, no, no. You are a great couple in this community. We must mark it. mark your wedding anniversary. You are not spending too much. You know what you are doing? You want to use that event to do what? To tell people about Jesus. It will bring the people you cannot speak to. 
You know, that's one challenge I see with several people. The people who are so close to a lot of people, they can't speak to them about Jesus. They are, they feel shy. So invite them now, like we they are come as a prayer program for you there and a small church. And it's a small church. It's not going to be a long uh, sermonization. Uh-huh. Genesis chapter 1, Exodus chapter 2. Uh, mm-mm. Short gospel message. Short gospel message. Before you know it, what is happening, you are taking advantage, establishing them in Christ. You don't know what God will make out of their lives. God will smile on you because your life is making heaven happy. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to buy something. Hello, but ah, how much do you sell this thing? Ah, why is this thing so expensive? You have started gospel. Ah, it was two thousand yesterday. Why is it three thousand today? The person will explain, Abby. Then begin to speak. Yes, Jesus would disobey, no? This would disobey, no? Are you not preaching? There's no how to me. There's no how. Once you can wake up and look, there's no how you can preach to people. Hallelujah. 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 But most importantly, whoever you speak to, do not let it stop at speaking to them. Let them observe what Christ has said concerning them. And the Lord will bless us in the name of Jesus Christ. Let me look for one more scripture. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Psalm 74 verse 20. Psalm 74 verse number 20. You can rub it. You can rub it. Thank you so much. Psalm 74, verse number 20. It says, Have respect unto the covenant, for the dark places of the earth are full of the habitation of cruelty. That should be our motivation to do all that we've been hearing. That should be our what? Our motivation. Where light is absent, where there is darkness, there is always cruelty. We went to a community, uh, they call it Alate. Even by the name, you know that something is not normal. Alate. What are they selling in heaven, sir? Alate. If any indigent should go to the community with a car, till that time, that was 2006 that we went there, they were ensure that they attack the vehicle. The possibility of the person dying was very high. We had to go with the gospel. I remember a particular woman, she had only two children, one of them was dead. The other one, so stop contacting the mother. She was this Muslim, to man anybody. So when we went, she said, please, I have a prayer request. What's your prayer request? She explained her situation. We took her aside. The only one that can help you is Jesus, not religion. She needed to hear from her child. She gave her life to Jesus that day. And I told her, before midnight, your child will speak to you. God confirmed his word. The following day, I was just moving around the community. She said, hey, Motibo, open me. I didn't know what, what. She now said, the daughter that had not called her for more than two years, called her that same night. Will she belong to the church, sir? She will. Yes. Why will she not belong to the church? Please. So one of the things that should motivate us 
is that where there is darkness, there will be cruelty. Who is the light? Jesus. And where is Jesus manifesting today? In us. So that should be our motivation to do, to go out and do what and do beyond what I have said. And the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Genesis chapter 1, verses 27 to 28. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. And God blessed them and said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion. Now, it's a mandate that we should do what? Be fruitful. It's a mandate that we are not just going to be fruitful. What are we to do? To multiply. What does it mean to multiply? To increase, increase. It's not just to increase. Three plus three. Three times three. Four plus four. Four times four. Did you understand the multiplication I said at that time? So it did not say go and increase. Abby, what did he say? He said be fruitful. What did he say next? So it's not four plus four. What is he saying? Four times four. So everyone you are reaching must reach somebody. Do you understand? Everyone you are reaching must do what? Must also reach somebody. Then do what? replenish the earth you have your contact people your, your world view is now the popular world view in your area then you do what you subdue and you do what you have dominion the Lord will help us in Jesus name now Romans chapter 8 verse 29 Romans chapter 8 verse 29 okay for whom he did for no he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son that he might be the firstborn among many brethren Jesus wants to make genuine biblical disciples. Hallelujah. I was sharing with some people, I said, somebody who comes to church to steal phone is not yet born again. Abby? Somebody who comes to church to look for a girlfriend or boyfriend is not yet born again. Our duty is to do what? To show them. Let me give you this. To do this, we have to be very practical. When I moved to my place, I saw that there were a lot of Muslims there. So what I was doing was, um, at times I would just, okay, bring your clothes, bring your clothes. I will stay outside with my wife. You know, I've done evangelism. I'll go outside with my wife. We have a place we could wash inside and wash. A Muslim cleric said, Pastor, ha, own challenge me. Baby. I never knew that. To him, a woman was just a, a piece of property in the house. So why should you? Through that, you know, he was, he was, he was so amazed. Why will you wash for your wife? He came, we started talking. I'm telling you, that was the premise on which he was led to Christ. She understand. He came to me, a Josa. I am so broke. Somebody is on my neck. Borrow me. I gave him not because I had too much. I gave him because I needed access to his life. He had borrowed money from me now. 
he was indebted to me. Do you know that it's about four years now, I didn't even remember to ask for the money. Because since he gave his life to Christ, his wife came to Christ, through him, I was able to reach the mother and the other siblings. In fact, I'm just remembering, this guy, my, oh, I didn't remember because my own intention was not to really give him the money. I wanted to have access to his life. So that through that, I'll be able to do what? God wants biblical, genuine, biblical disciples. That's one of the reasons we need to plant church. And that's the other reason we need to reach out to other people. Because Jesus wants to see the reflection of himself in others. And we can only do this, there's nothing, just like I said earlier, there's nothing we can do to make what Christ desires to come to pass that is too much. Oh. There is nothing. The other day, I was watching The Passion of Christ. I watched and said, now, wow. Jesus was crucified naked. The film couldn't show a naked man. Abisa said, just because he wanted me to become his child. Not that he didn't have the power to rescue himself. Or to destroy those people who wanted to kill him. He surrendered himself, having me in mind. Galatians chapter 2, verse 20 says, The life I live no longer belongs to me. I should live his life. I, my life should be an extension of his life. Once that once we do that, it will be easy for us to do what? To tell people about Christ, to share his love among many. John chapter 15, verse 16. John chapter 15 verse 16 You have not chosen me but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruits that your fruit should remain that whatsoever you shall ask the father in my name he may give it to you He said you did not you did not come to the Lord of your volition. What did he do? God brought you to himself. Why did he bring you? That you should go. Hallelujah. Let me ask you this question. How do I go? Do I go by sitting down at a point? If I sit down at a spot, am I going? He says, he, or, he called us, he chose us, he empowered us that we should do what? Go! What should we go to do? To bring forth fruits. To preach Jesus to the Habalists, to the, to the Muslim, to every other person. I was at uh, Ikotun a few years back and these women normally wear white. Uh, Osho... She just accosted me. I called me for me low. I said, Ah, me only for a low, Jesu. Ah, how much you near? Ah, you know, you know, I love, I do with us saying, Ah, get being permanent. You got to see no for you now. She wanted me to give her money, and I was ready to engage her in discussion so we started talking we started i wouldn't mind she, you can sit down i'll buy food for you let's sit down let's talk we started talking there and then she told me i will accept it. i said if i give you this money and you don't follow jesus do you know jesus he will fight you this is his money he said i, I promise you i will give my life to jesus another one a man he said he came from me but i couldn't follow him up just came, uh, you know all these things. They, they they do they operate the spirit of divination. So I, I told him, your divination has never helped you. You see your clothes, you are wearing rags. So why did your God? Why is your God doing this to you? He's punishing you. Ah, what do you mean? Then I started talking to him. There and then he told me he gave me his address at Oyingbo, but that's one fault. I couldn't go. But I made sure I preached Christ to him. He says he ordained us that we should do what? That we should go. 
What are we going to do to bring forth fruits? Not mango and orange. To go and bring souls. And look at the way he concluded it. And that your fruit should do what? Should remain. Then ask him any, ask, ask me anything you want. I will do what? I will give to you. So maybe one of the things that is denying the release of our expectation is the fact that we have not started going well. Let that be a motivation to us and the Lord will bless us in Jesus' name. Wow. Okay. Uh, let's look at Luke chapter 13. Maybe that's where I will stop. Luke chapter 13 verses 6 and 9. Luke chapter 13 verse 6. He spake also this parable. A certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came and sought fruit thereon and found none. Verse 9, sir. Okay, let's read it so that we'll get the import of the whole thing, sir. Uh -huh. Then said he unto the dresser of the vineyard, Behold, these three years I came. Came, I come seeking fruit on this fig tree and find none. Cut it down. Why come it the ground? Yes, sir. And he answering said unto him, Lord, let it alone this year also, till I dig about it and dung it. And if it bear fruit, well, if not, then thou shalt cut it down. Let me ask you. Let's be practical. Since you knew the Lord, how many souls have you intentionally led to the Lord? Abby? Look at this. This, this scripture is a very heavy scripture. It says, for these three years, what are you doing? Abby? Coming to look for fruit on this particular fig tree. And for three years, this tree has not brought forth fruit. What did he say? Do what? Cut it down. But the manager said, please, sir. One more year. Making year four. One more year, I will dig around it. I'll put my nail. If it bear fruit, it has escaped death. If it does not bear fruit, you can do what? Cut it down. Ask yourself this question. Am I, let, you see, I am purposely using this word. Am I intentionally bringing fruit to the kingdom? That John 15, 16 says, the reason he brought you, the reason he chose you, there were people who were better than you, but he chose you. Why did he choose you? So that you can go and bring forth fruit. How many fruits are you bringing to him? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many fruits are you bringing to him? Let's be inten intentional about all this. We were somewhere around motion for evangelism, so we, we exhausted our tracks. There was a big church around, so I just moved in. Hey, do you want tracks there? Ah, uh, I need tracks. Ah. Hey, checking me. <coughs> so I moved to another church. Please, we are uh, doing evangelism in this area. Please, can we get. He said they don't have tracks. I said, ah, you don't have tracks. Uh, ah. You know, it was amazing to me that uh, a whole church. Hey, yeah, nitrat. Then what's the, what are you really killing? She? What are, what's your business? What are you doing? How much does it cost to print it? Sir, so with less than 5,000, you can print at least 1,000 tracks. It will not be too big now. Ah, hey, yeah, nitrat. So what I'm bringing, where I'm coming is this. It says, for three years. For three years. I don't know how long God has been. In this particular case, it was three years. That God had been looking. Will I find fruit here? He didn't find. Let me ask you, what fruit is God seeing in your own life? What is God benefiting from your life? 
most of our prayer is God, me, myself, and I, me, myself. What is the benefit of God in your salvation? What is God deriving? What is he getting? What is the dividend? Because he said, for three years, I've been, this particular fig tree, I have been coming. I don't know if it is daily or weekly or monthly or quarterly or yearly. But what he said, for three years, I have been coming to this particular fig tree. And for three years, I have not found any fruits. Eh! Maybe that person was a reverend doctor, a bishop, an archbishop, a pastor doctor, an evangelist doctor, whatever title you are bearing. That's not the important thing. He said, this fig tree, this particular fig tree for three years, three years have been coming. How many times have God been visiting your lives? What has he been able to bring out? What fruit has he, has, has he been able to benefit from your life? Have you been able to satisfy his longing and his hunger? David was in the hold. The garrison of the Philistines were by the well that he loved at Bethlehem. The Bible said he longed. He did not ask anybody. He did not assign anybody. Ah! How oh, I just longed to drink from that well in Bethlehem. Three people went out. Azadia to bring water for him. The king of glory is thirsty. He's looking for souls. What will you do to satisfy his longing? What will you do to make him happy? What will you do to actualize his expectation? It is well with us. Finally, can we look at the book of Luke chapter 10? 10, 17. No, 17, 10 then. So likewise ye, when ye shall have done all the things which are commanded you, say we are unprofitable servants. We have done which is our duty to do. Look at what he said. You have done all, not some, not 80%, not 90%. You have done all that has been assigned to you. Say that we are what? Unprofitable servants. We have only done our duty. Someone who did all cannot glory. Someone who did not do what God has assigned him to do. What will he say? I'm asking a question now. And I want an answer. Somebody who did everything. Abi, he says, so likewise ye, when ye shall have done all, all those things which are commanded you say we are unprofitable servants we've done that which was our duty to do abby now someone who did not do all what will he say yes, sir, sir? Yes. just wanted to meditate and reflect on this lord i'm ready i want to be fruitful for you I want to walk. I want to be the extension of your hands and your feet. I want my vocal cord to be the cord you will use to reach out to people. Please, let's begin to speak to the Lord. Let's begin to speak to Him. Thank you, sir. Hey, yekita marata yekito washanda lava. Thank you, Lord. Ah. Let's stand up on your hands. Let's bless the name of the Lord. Things have been dropped in our spirits today. Things we can use to improve our service. Thank you, Father. The challenge has been thrown to us. What are we going to do? How are we going to relate to this? How will the kingdom profit by our lives? How shall we make the impact we are supposed to make? How will our sphere of influence, our community change? Let's tell the Lord, Lord, empower me. Lord, help me. Make me an instrument in your hand, a vessel, on, on, a vessel that can serve me. A vessel in your hands. Let me be a vessel in your hands. Let me be a vessel in your hands. Heavenly Father, help me to be a vessel in your hands.
Maybe 